What's up everybody, welcome back to another video. So um, in today's kind of review, we're gonna be taking a look at one of these hidden gems of sample libraries. And this is from Bunker Samples and it's the Harmonium. So you might know Bunker Samples from Bunker Strings, that's kind of their flagship product so far, uh, where he kind of went out to a, an actual bunker and recorded a bunch of unique string articulations, some that you can't find in anywhere else. Um, so, you know, having having you know being known for something unique like that is definitely something that uh, is good to have especially as a smaller developer when you're trying to establish yourself uh, in the industry so you know again with this library he basically sampled an instrument that's been less sampled before um, so the harmonium is kind of uh, it tended to be the ultimate realistic harmonium library but in addition to that you also have the sound design possibilities um, that are actually relatively easy to use. Myself not being a sound designer person, uh, you know, I don't fare really well with that stuff, but, you know, this library makes it pretty easy to load up some pretty interesting textures. So hopefully we'll get to some of those, but I just want to play a little bit and show you what the general sound is like, so. <laughs> So in addition to a really nice uh, warm tone, he's also recorded each of the keys. So, you know, the key sounds, I mean, if you listen to some of these notes, right, it's quite present there. So if I turn up this, this uh, value here, you can really hear each of those keys. So you get that noise, which makes it more realistic. So um, it's, it's all about a fine balance, of course. And so the default setting, I think, is pretty good. Uh, for the stops, you can actually press on each of these, which gives you the sound of actually the stop going in and out. Now, of course, um, you know, selecting each of these isn't just to hear how wonderful that's uh, the stop sounds, but, um, but in order to hear and um, audition, each of these stops, you can just click on them to mute them. And if you pull it out, then you can actually start to hear it. So you, if you look at the blue uh, key switch range here, these basically represent the lower three uh, stops and then the upper three are for the yellow parts. Uh, yellow key switch is there. So uh, playable range, let's hear the first stop. The second and third one are actually an octave lower. touch warmer, whereas the second one has a little more detail, a little more uh, laid back, just a bit there. Uh, number four. This one's a little brighter, and this one's the brightest. So all together, um, it just forms a really nice overall sound, with all layered on top of each other, you know? If you want a more kind of dynamic response, like more dynamic range in the playing, you can, you know, load this up even more. And if I play lightly, it's going to result in a, in a softer sound and then louder. Obviously, it's more responsive. So then it becomes more like a, you know, regular piano. Um, but I think usually by default, it's set to 50%. Um, so you have real attack and real release, which, um, as he mentions in the walkthrough video, it's more about... Uh, keeping it realistic. All right, let's take a look at some of these uh, sound design possibilities here. So let's solo this stop right here. I'm gonna click on that one to open the options, make sure I have it selected. Uh, clicking that little circle. And then um, you can see at uh, this intensity rate is up. So at zero, you're not gonna get any of that, um, you know, this 
effect. So it, you have to turn it up in order to he hear it start to come in. <laughs> and then if I want it slower. Hello, it's Chris calling. Um, so yeah, anyway, um, that, that's, that one probably affects the tone kind of the most actually, uh, you know, actually pitch wise, it's pretty cool. And then if you have them all doing different things, let's say I want this pitch LFO, but then this one, I have the volume LFO and let's say I diff choose a different wave here. Let's say I went with a square and I turn that up and let's say I bring that up to, uh, is that a 30 second note? I'll just hear this one by itself. Oh, it's because it's not on. There we go. That's why. So. Right, and then you have chorus, rotator, form, and I mean, he demonstrates all of these on the walkthrough video, but this is just the second half of the library that makes it so much more versatile than just a single harmonium. Uh, but for my purposes, you know, knowing me, um, I'm probably going to use it for its bare intended purpose, which is the, um, you know, the actual sampled instrument itself. Uh, for sound design stuff, it, it's obviously very handy to have everything listed right here. Um, and, and you know what, it sounds great. It does its purpose super well. Um, you know, you could even send it to a reverb that you wanted to and, uh, you know, a delay as well. But for my purposes, I think the, sorry, I should turn these back on. Um, the intended uh, purpose of the actual instrument itself. Just very warm. I'm thinking in a singer-songwriter context, I would probably use it as a pad of some sort. Um, and if I wanted to make it even more cinematic, I'd probably add this reverb and delay to really wash it out, have it settle in the background and just kind of, you know, lay in the back as a supporting figure. Um, you can always automate that as well, uh, the, the reverb, you know, to dry it up. Um, you know, all these different things I'm sure can be assigned to MIDI CCs, as it says here, learn to, you know, learn these automations. So um, that's super helpful if you want to actually have fine control over all these parameters. But hopefully that's uh, a little bit of a, you know, walkthrough of the library. I mean, Nick does a wonderful job in his walkthrough video going through all the different options, but I just kind of wanted to bring this to you and show you that this library exists. And, uh, you know, if you're looking for a, a classic harmonium uh, to take, you know, your listener back in, in time a little bit, or even bring it forward um, with some sound design options and, you know, in some, some of your own unique ways, uh, this is definitely a good option. I would definitely check it out and it's very affordable as well. So uh, props to Nick for doing a good job and I will check you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then. Bye-bye.